Aloha. I fed all the street cats and gave them fresh water. Everybody was accounted for. It was raining before and after the feeding. God always seems to stop the rain just long enough so I could feed the street cats. I'm a very emotional guy, as you can tell from my unusual melodramatic movements during these morning monologues. It's beneficial to be an emotional person when you're an autobiographical writer. Previously, good friends I've had throughout my life have told me that they like being around me, they like hanging out with me because everything is an adventure. I make things exciting. I'm a perfect person for a road trip. I make the most of monotonous texts and at least make them interesting. Being emotional is usually not in somebody's best interest. Most people have better luck being rational and not running on emotion. I've been reading the nonfiction author Robert Greene lately. He wrote the famous book 48 Laws of Power, and one thing he said in an interview is that sometimes he writes better when he's angry or quote-unquote a little upset. I can see this with writing, but normally it's counterintuitive. In sports, sometimes your opponent will try to quote-unquote get under your skin, and unless you're Kobe Bryant, it usually works. Muhammad Ali was great at this, and he sometimes defeated a bigger and stronger opponent by getting under their skin. Patrick Beverly, current NBA player, has made a career of doing this. I remember when I was a teacher, occasionally a student would try to test me and get under my skin. But unlike with writing, you don't want to be emotional and let that get the best of you when teaching. Many kids who are assholes in high school are not that way their entire life. The frontal cortex part of the brain isn't fully developed until we are 25. I saw a former student of mine earlier today, and after talking to him for a second, I realized he wasn't as much of a troublemaker as he was in high school. He was surprisingly well-spoken and polite. You can't take back everything you say in life, but it's important to continue to learn and grow at any age. I think I do a great job of this, and that's why, unlike any other 43-year-olds, I've been able to build a community on TikTok just in the last 12 months. I've received millions of views and thousands of dollars in donations, mainly cat food. Most 43-year-olds could never do that because of their ego. Their ego tells them that they will look silly or, They're all going to laugh at you! The 40-year-old who doesn't have any money, friends, or connections wouldn't ever consider sharing their life with strangers, with kids on TikTok. Their ego tells them that they're too old or too unattractive. The ego hates new things, especially new music. The ego is happy with the 12 songs it listened to in high school. Enjoying anything new would open themselves up to ridicule. One of my favorite quotes I learned when I first moved to Hawaii 10 years ago, it's by Deepak Chopra, and he says, Relinquish the ego. There's great strength in that. The ego is afraid to fail, but failure is the key to success. You have to cook French toast a hundred times before you're good at it. I love to cook roasted turkey with all the sides, but my first turkey dinner wasn't even half as good as I can cook one now. You gotta learn what not to do before you know what you're supposed to do. I had to learn this the hard way in life, and that takes much longer. There are two ways to learn something. You either put your hand on a hot stove, or a teacher or a parent tells you otherwise.